Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class, our free tutoring night. So um, tonight um, we will have a Halloween special. So I do have one problem that someone sent in that I would like to do on the live. And then um, if there are any more problems that someone wants me to do, just send me an email at 407 8019255 and I will work on your problem. But the all the other problems that I do have um will be um pertaining to Halloween. So and they're not scary, it's just a fun thing to do for tonight. So let's get started. And this is um something that someone sent me. Um, um, earlier, and so I'm going to do the problem for on the live right now. So let's do it. They knew that zero one, zero negative one was one of the solutions, and they are correct. So where I put the green dot is one of the solutions. The other solution is here where the red and the blue line cross. But they couldn't figure out what the answer was. So in this type of question, they want you to actually give the ordered pair of the second solution or for both solutions. So what you have to do is set these um, equations equal to each other. So the first equation that we have here is y equals 4x squared minus 1. And the other equation is 3x minus y is equal to 1. <clears throat> In order to set them equal to each other, you need to solve for y for the second equation. So, um, let me subtract 3x from both sides. And this would be negative y is equal to negative 3x plus 1. Divide everything by negative 1. And so y is equal to 3x minus 1. Um, so now that you have both your equations, and they're both y equals something, you can set them up um, to be equal to each other. So this would be 4x squared minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 1. So I'll subtract 3x from both sides and I get 4x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals negative 1. Add 1 to both sides. There you zero pairs. So now you have 4x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. Now you're trying to solve for x and x will have two solutions. And I know this because my highest exponent is a 2. So you see that 4x squared? That means you're going to have at least two solutions. So let's um, factor out an x. And we're left with 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. Um, this level question is, um, this came from an Algebra 2 student. So I'm doing the question. <laughs> so one of the solutions is going to be x is equal to 0. The other solution is 4x minus 3 is equal to 0, but you need to solve for x. So this is going to be 4x is equal to 3, x is equal to 3 fourths. And yes, I skipped some steps, but those are your two x coordinates for your solutions. And we know that to be true because this ordered pair is 0 and negative 1. The other ordered pair so far is going to be 3 fourths. And you don't know what the actual um, you don't know the actual y value is going to be. So you have to plug it into either one of your equations to get that answer. So, and it doesn't matter which one you do, 
So what I'm going to do is erase what I have so far because I'm running out of space. So let's do it like this. Okay. So it's going to go here. And so it doesn't matter which equation you plug it into, you're going to get the same answer. But I'll show you both ways. We go 4 and we got 3 fourths x and then it's squared minus 1. And then you also can plug it into this equation. 3 times 3 fourths minus 1. Um, with this part, you get 4. <clears throat> and this is 9 over 16 minus 1 it's going to be 36 over 16. I could change my 1 into a fraction and make it 16 over 16. And so 36 minus 16 is going to give me 20 over 16. I can divide both the 20 and the 16 by 4 and I get y is equal to 5 fourths or one and one fourth. Okay, now when I do it over here, I should get the same answer. So this is going to be nine over four. I'm going to change my one into four over four and get five over four or one and one fourth. So the other ordered pair is going to be, and let me, would be one and one fourth. So those are your two solutions. It says what are the solutions? The one, one solution is going to be zero and negative one. The other solution is going to be three fourths and one and one fourth. Okay. So this is a question that was um, sent to me earlier. I just wanted to do it on the live for that person. Okay, let's go to a Halloween question. I'm going to um, make a jack-o'-lantern for you and using the order pairs over here. Um, so let's go. We start plotting seven and a half and nine. This is going to be the nose for our um, jack o' lantern. Now let's meet the mouth. Okay, so four and five, and then six and three, and nine and three. And then where we are, 11 and 5, and 9 and 4, uh, 7 and a half and 5, and 6 and 4, and back to 4 and 5. So you, you go back to where you started just so you connect them all together. So this is going to be our mouth. Okay, so now the next one is going to be, let's do the eye, the left eye. So we're at four and 10 and five and 10 and six and 12 and three and 12 and then back to four and 10. So let's connect them. Oh, it's starting to look like something now. So now let's do the other, this is gonna be the right eye. 
So it's going to be 10 and 10 and 11 and 10, 12 and 12, 9 and 12, and back to 10 and 10. So let's connect. Oh, I know y'all see it now. I know you see it. So let's do the stem. Let's go ahead and do the stem. So 7 and 13. And 9 and 13. 9 13. And 10 and 15. And 8. And 15 and back to 7 and 13. So let's connect our stem. Actually, let me do this one in green because I want my stem to be green. Okay, so now let's just do the outline. So it's going to be like the big body part, the circle part. So 7 and 13. I think I'll go ahead and do this one in orange. Okay, so 7 and 13, which is here, and then 5 and 14, up, up, up here, and 3 and 13, uh -huh. 2 and 12, 1 and 9, And then one and six, two and three, four and two, six and one. Ooh, I know y'all see it. Isn't it cute? It's gonna be so cute. I think we're gonna make it a girl. Um nine and one. And then 11 and 2, 13 and 3, 14 and 6, and then 14 and 9, there we go, and 13 and 12. 12 and 13, 11 and 14, and then 9 and 13. So it's back here. So now let's connect it all together. So it's going to be here, 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 here. Isn't that cute? We're going to make it a girl. We're going to put some lashes on it. A pumpkin. Okay. Let's make it cute. Let's put some pink lashes. This don't even match, child. We're going to make it a girl. Okay. She cute. There we go. And give us some, some deep red lips. Oh yeah. You ain't even know. Look at her. Now she is cute. Come on now. I know you got to say that. Cute. Cute and cute. Okay. <laughs> Let's do another problem. <laughs> I know she cute. Yeah, go ahead and put it in the comments. Yeah, she cute. She is Miss Pumpkin. That's who she is. Okay, let's do another problem. So it says, Andy has a number of friends who like dressing as zombies for Halloween. Two years ago, four of his friends decided dressed as zombies. Last year, 
that number increased by 50%. This year, the number increased by one third over last year. How many of Andy's friends are dressing as zombies this year? They be like, what in the world are they talking about? It's too much going on in this problem. And why are your friends dressing like zombies, Andy? Why in the world are they even doing that? Okay, so let's take our time. Let's go back through the reading and figure this out. Let me change my colors. Oh boy. Let's get this out. Let me get that. Okay. Can you see that now? Mm, it should be good. Okay. So it says Andy has a number of friends who like dressing as zombies for Halloween. Two years ago, four friends dressed as zombies. So we could say two years. ago he had four friends then it says last year um that number increased by 50 percent so we take that number and then we take it and uh, multiply it by 50 percent so times 0 0.5 okay so we get four plus 0 0.5 so we say four times um, 0 0.5 is going to get us um, 2. So that's going to be 2. So this, it increased to 6. So now this year, so we're going to say this year, um, the number increased by one third over last year. So last year was Six and it increased by one third. So we're going to multiply the six times one third, and that's going to be um, put this over one. It'll be six over three, or you could say two, and it increased to eight. So, how many of Andy friends are dressing like zombies this year? It's going to be eight friends. There we go. Let's keep it moving. If you want me to help you with your math problem, that's the reason why I'm doing this, is to offer help. You can text me at 407-801-9255, and I'll help you out. But in the meantime, I'm just going to do these Halloween problems. Okay, so it says, um, Nathan Gill couldn't remember exactly how many cupcakes Haley and Virgil made for the Halloween party. But he did remember that all together, Haley, Virgil, and he had made 156 cupcakes. He also remembered that he and Haley had made 110, and he and Virgil had made 94. How many did each person make? So let's go back to this sentence right here, all together. They made 156 cupcakes. So I'm going to represent um, them by the first letter. So we could say Haley plus um, Virgil plus Nathaniel equals 156 cupcakes. And then it says here, he remembered that um, him and Haley, so Nathaniel plus Haley, uh, 110. And then he remembered that him and Virgil made 94. So how many did each person make? So this is a, a ball of confusion, but we got this. So what I can do is substitute information into the main equation, which is the H plus B plus N is equal to 156. But I need to rewrite my H so that I could put it into the equation. So I'm gonna solve for N, I mean solve for H. 
over here. Zero pairs. So H is going to equal to 110 minus N. And then I can do the same thing here. Subtract N from both sides. Zero pair and pair. And so Virgil's going to be 94 cupcakes minus whatever Nathaniel made. And this really says Haley is going to be 110 cupcakes minus whatever Nathaniel made. So we can put it all together. In place of um, Haley, we can put 110 minus N plus in place of Virgil, we can put 94 minus N. And then we have Nathaniel and then we have 156. Now this, now I can combine like terms. So we have um, 110 plus 94, 110 plus 94 is 410, that's going to be 204. So we have 204 minus, we have 2N, so this is minus 2N plus N, and that's going to get you 204 minus n is equal to 156. So what we can do now is um, subtract 204 from both sides. Most kids wouldn't do this because they'd be like, oh no, I don't like dealing with negative numbers. But I'm cool with it. I could do it. So let's see, 156 minus 204 is 9. 1, that's going to be 48 negative 48 and then you divide by negative 1 and so Nathaniel made 48 cupcakes now you can figure out everyone now so um, Haley is 110 minus 48 and give myself some space just erase over here So we have 110 minus 48, and it's going to be 62. So Haley has 62. So let's box our answers. That's Nathaniel. This is Haley. And now for Virgo, it's 94 minus 48. going to be 46. And I pray I got all of them right. So how do you check your work? You can actually add them all up and if they equal 156 then you're in business. So let's see. Let's check our work. So we got 48 plus 62. That's 10. That's 110. Plus 46. Oh, we did it. 156. Okay, so we're good to go. All right, next problem. So it says three witches were making a brew and needed to triple their recipe. The original recipe called for one and one third cups of bug splatter two and one-fourth cups of sardines, three-fourths of a cup of dirty dish water, and two-thirds of a cup of moldy asparagus. What quantity should they use for a triple batch? All right, it all sounds gross to me. So let's, uh, this is going to be just multiplying each one of the fractions by three. So let's start with the bug splatter. That's so gross. So the bug splatter, we have one and one third times three. We're gonna change this to a four third times three over one. And we get 12 over three. And so we're gonna to need to increase our bug splatter to four cups. Okay, now let's go to the sardines. 
For the sardines, we have two and one fourth cup, and we need to triple that. So let's make this nine over four times three over one. And we get, um, what's that, 27 over four. And we need to change our improper fraction to a mixed number. Uh, we can do that by with division. So over here, let me say 4 into 27 goes 6 times. And that's going to get 24. And that's going to be a 3. So this is going to be 6 and 3 fourths cups of sardines. And what is next? Dirty dish water. So you're going to need to do three-fourths cups of that. But you need to triple that, and we can make that over one. So that's going to be nine over four. Or this is going to be two and one-fourth cups of dirty dish water. And lastly is going to be the moldy asparagus. Oh, mess that up. Okay, so for this one, let's put that over here. It's going to be two thirds, and we need to triple that. And it's going to be six over three, or two cups of moldy asparagus. Moldy asparagus. And it all sounds gross to me, but that's the recipe that we need to make. That the witches need them. So on and so forth. Let's go on. So it says Mrs. Gibbs and her husband put all their spare change into a, a monster bank because it's shaped like a monster, not a piggy, or it would be called it would, would have been a piggy bank throughout the year. At Halloween, she donates all the change to the local homeless shelter. But not before her sixth grade students helped to count it all. This year, they counted 1,352 quarters, 985 dimes, um, let's see, 643 nickels, and 635 pennies. Uh, how much did Mrs. Gibbs? donate this year so we got a lot of stuff we got to calculate so let's get to work so for the first one where is that ready to go it was 1000 1352 quarters so let's do the quarters thousand three hundred fifty two and I'm going to quarters are 25 cents so I'm going to say 0 0.25 and let's see how much money that is going to be so this is going to be 10 26 15 17 and 6 placeholder and this is 4 10 that's going to be 7 and 3. And we get here 0, 10, 8, 13, 8, 13, and then, make sure I'm right, is it 438? Wait, is that supposed to be two? That's supposed to be two. I need something with one. Okay, let's make sure. Four, ten, and seven. Yeah, it's supposed to be a two.
of 985 and dimes are worth 10 cents, so 0 0.10. So the first line is all zeros, placeholder. And then 5, 8, and 9 added together. 6, 8, 9, and 2 decimal places again. So 1, 2. So the dimes is $98.50. Next is going to be the nickels. And nickels are worth five cents. And we have 643 of them. And times 0 0.05. Point zero 0.05. And this is going to be 15, 21, 32. In two decimal places, one, two. So we got 32.15. Now for the penny. And we have, what is it, 635. 635. And point zero one, and this of course is five, three, and six, two decimal places, six dollars and thirty five cents. So we need to add it all together. So we have three. I like to do it in batches, so I'm gonna do all of it at one time. And ninety eight fifty. Let's add these two together. So zero. 5, 16, 12, 13. So we have 436. That's a lot of money they done saved up. So let's add in the um the nickels. 32, 15, 5, 6, 8, 6, and 4. And then let's add in our penny. 468, 65, plus 635, and 0, 0, 15, 7, that's a lot of money. So, how much are they going to donate? $475. I like that donation myself. Come on, Mrs. Gibbs. Come on, girl. Okay, next one says, if each bat eats 800 bugs per hour for five hours per night, how many bugs will a colony of 50 bats eat in a week? This is, come on, bats and bugs. Okay, so let's start. So first off, how many bats we have in all? We have 50 of them. So we got 50 bats. And each bat is going to eat 800 bugs. Okay. So if each bat eats 800 bugs and then they eat these bugs for five hours and they eat this seven for seven nights, how many bugs have they eaten? So let's take this two at a time. Let's do these two first. So we have 800 times 50. Zero, 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 placeholder, zero, zero, 40. So we have 40,000 bugs already. That's a lot. So now, Let's multiply this. So let, let's put this. Now we have 40,000 bugs. Now we're going to do that for five hours. This is just in one hour. So this is 40,000 bugs in one hour. That's really what they're saying. Now we're going to multiply this by five hours. 
So now we have 200,000 bugs in five hours. Okay, so now let's do this for seven days. <laughs> so it's going to be, let me do it up here, 200,000 for seven days. And we hit zero, 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 and four, or 14. So, how many bugs did 50 bats eat in one week for five hours? It's going to be 1,400,000 bugs. That's a whole lot of bugs. Poor bugs. Stay away from bats. Okay, let's keep going. Next question says, what percentage of the letters in the in the letter G is the letter G, sorry, in four Gashley Googles Google Googles, I don't even know all these words, wearing green um goggles. Um and what percent are it's the letter O. Okay. It's a lot of counting, but I can do this. So let's look at the words. Let me put, let me put these words down individually. We got four. And we're going to make a column. We're going to say, um, so what I need to do, this is actually like a percent or part over whole kind of thing. So I need to know the total number of letters, first off. So how many total letters do I have? How many of the letters are G's and how many letters are O's? And I need to know that for each one of the words. So I have four letters here. None of them are O's. And I mean G's and one is an O. So let's go to the next word. So you get this uh, confused. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six letters total. And we have one G and no O's. Now for the next word. I have one, two, three, six letters. One G and one O. Now for the next word. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. I have two G's. Yes, ma'am. There you go. You got it? Okay. So I have um, two, G's, two G's and two O's. Okay. Next word. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. I have two G's and three O's. And next word, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one G and no O's. And I have this word here, one, two, three, four, five letters, one G and no O's, and then last word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And three G's and one O. So let's add up what we have so far. Okay, so this is supposed to be seven. I can't count, y'all. I promise you, I can. Okay, so <laughs> let's see here. Um. One, two, three, four, five. I got seven. I got five, seven. So that's 35. And then this is going to make me 10. So that's 45. So I got 50 letters. That's my total. And for the G's, I see I have one, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And for those, I have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the first question says, what percent are G's? So percent of the G is going to be, remember, from to find a percent, it's going to be part over whole. So the part is 11. The whole is 50. And I just set that equal to percent over 100 because all percents are like that. Now, here's a trick I like to use. Um, I know that if I multiply 50 times 2, I get 100. So I could do the same thing with 11. So the answer is going to be 22% are G's. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the percent of O's. Percent of O's, and so I have 8 over 50 is equal to X over 100. And again, I can multiply this by 2, this by 2, and so I get 16% are going to be um, O's. Okay. All right. I think I'm done. Yes, I'm done for the evening. Oh, 8.30 on the dot almost. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, I only had one person um, call in, not call in, but send them a math problem in. And that's the most I've had since I've been doing the live. So uh, we got to celebrate the little things. <laughs> so anyway, I will see you guys on next Monday night for another free math tutoring night. So, ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.